It's a Canadian post-secondary first. If you want to attend Seneca College in person in the fall, be prepared to show proof of a COVID-19 vaccine. Otherwise, stay online. We're not forcing anybody, actually. The, we're actually not making vaccines mandatory. We're saying if you want to come on campus, you must be vaccinated. It's a decision Seneca President David Agnew says he made with the safety of his students in mind. Honestly, I... I would love government to come in and, and say these are the rules of the road because that makes it easier for everybody. But we can't wait. And the Ontario government doesn't appear to be in a hurry, declining to give a firm answer to Global News on its plans. As far as immunizations go, only Ontario, New Brunswick and recently BC have required students to be vaccinated against childhood illnesses. Epidemiologists see COVID-19 as a logical addition to that list. This is this Herd immunity notion, right? You have a wall, people get vaccinated. All you need is some not to be vaccinated and the virus sneaks through. So the notion of, well, I don't need to be vaccinated because I'm gonna be okay, it, it, it's ridiculous. Protect as many, you know, get this wall up. So we'll get down to zero coronavirus and we can get on with life. Yet it's a debate with seemingly no middle ground. It's either a question of public health or individual rights. Western University says students must be vaccinated to live in campus dorms this coming school year. Others may follow. In the U.S., schools have been quicker to act. More than 500 post-secondary institutions, including Harvard and Berkeley, have already committed to mandatory student vaccinations. You know, the social fabric of the United States and Canada is, is similar, but boy, it sure isn't identical. And, you know, we're looking at this through a Canadian lens of how we view our own rights and responsibilities. So in some ways, it's not that surprising that Canada is struggling with this one. It's an issue, he says, worthy of debate. But halfway through July, how much time do we have? Mike Drolight, Global News, Toronto.